my, how the park has changed. I barely recognise it anymore with all these artists buzzing about. Oh, they're not so bad. So many different and exciting smells. Yes, well, you and I have always valued different things in smells. And now we need to sniff out Val. Just like before, let's find some people with memories of her and track down those mementos. After my wife Penny's death, I struggled to find ways to spend time with my daughter. It had hit us both hard, but, you know, stiff upper lip and all that. I always found it best to keep busy. Looking for something we could do together, I bought Valerie a set of paints. But she never even opened them. I was cross at first, but asked myself, what would Penny do? So I decided to let it go. Then one day I managed to talk her into coming into the park with me to paint some of the nature she loves so much. She wasn't very enthusiastic, but agreed to give it a try. It was a disaster. Valerie simply didn't have the temperament for painting. She had a huge silly tantrum and threw all the paints away. I told her I wasn't having this kind of childish behavior and I told her to stay in her room until she had calmed down. I wished Penny was still with us. She would have known what to do with the child. Mm. Very hard, that, to lose a parent. It was never going to be easy after her mum died, but he always did seem distracted with his fancy art projects. Painting really wasn't for Val, was it? I'm getting the scent of Grenkins again, Morris. I'll pop up to let you know when we're close to one. Get enough gloves. 
I stole a farmer's glove. I stole a fisherman's glove. I saw that girl out in my woods, riding that strange bumpy beast around again. She really seemed to love that awful creature. This was an opportunity I wasn't going to miss. <laughs> Lovely gloves. I always did suspect there might be something in those rumours about camels on the island. All that time, and Val never let on. <laughs> Bless you, Val. Hey, Morris, I bet you wish you were alive so you could rob me with this glove. Last summer, before our GCSEs, Val and me spent a lot of time together, usually wondering how we could get our hands on something to drink. No one on this stupid little island would serve us, though. One day, we were hanging around on the allotments near the quay, when we spotted something. And so, later that night, We went into the woods behind Val's house to drink it, sitting on top of that ancient stone that they say protects the island. But there was no way we were going to get through it all, so we decided to bury the rest. A few weeks later, we went to dig it up again, but couldn't remember where we dug the hole. There is so much of our history buried on this island. Stories everywhere, right under your feet. Well, Morris, this smells incredible. I'm getting scallops, I'm getting peaty bogs, I'm getting roast lamb. Woof!
The famous sculptor Vernon Russett was working on a huge statement piece in my honor. A statue of a camel with my head! When I saw it, I felt quite uncomfortable, but I didn't want to upset him. Poor Vernon could be awfully temperamental, sinking into dark moods for days. The week before the public unveiling, Vernon had me visit the statue. He needed to make some final adjustments to the face. Valerie came along too. She looked like thunder. She hated that statue and wasn't afraid to show it. I couldn't help thinking how like her mother she was. When the statue was revealed, the nose was missing. Fortunately, we all managed to cover our surprise and act like nothing was wrong. So no one was any the wiser. Some fellow from the Times wrote a glowing review so Vernon wasn't too glum about it. I'm pretty sure I know what happened to that nose. Aha, the old Outram spirit. <laughs> Good for you, Valerie. Your mother would have been proud of you. <laughs> your Val told me about this. She had a whole speech prepared, in case they figured out it was her who cut that nose off. But she never even needed it. This thing looks heavy. I'm surprised Val was able to even lift it. I spent the summer of 83 with Henry Outram, Laird of Shelmiston, in his grand hall working on a new piece. It was supposed to be about the volcano, but once I arrived, I found myself particularly taken by all the veils around the island. Henry was a delightful host, always excited to have us bright young artists around, and always ready with a charming question or a fortifying glass of something. His daughter, I think her name was Mallory or Valerie or something, was usually outside roaming the grounds. Henry said she was discovering herself and learning self-reliance through independent play. She seemed feral to me. One day, I came across the perfect finishing touch to my sculptural masterpiece, but it turned out to belong to the wretched child. I tried to explain to her why I needed it, but she snatched it away and walked off. I went to Henry, thinking he could make her give me the boat. But to my astonishment, Henry told me it was up to her if she wanted to give it to me. Henry called his daughter and we all talked about it. When Henry suggested that maybe I could buy the boat, her little eyes lit up. It cost me 200 pounds for that little wooden boat. But well, it was worth it. Ah, 
Henry was a good dad at heart, caring about Val's feelings and treating her like a grown-up even when she was little. Partly how she became so independent, I reckon. I know it was tough on him, but they both turned out pretty well. I wonder how many people even saw this. Oh, we did it! Oh, yes, I know what Val smells like now. Her signal is wafting through to me very clearly. Time to fly.
Morris? Morris Lopton? Is that really you? And Sparky? Val! Oh, it's so good to see you again. You too. You're looking very, um... Um, yeah. Dead. <laughs> yeah. But quite good, considering. Hello, Val. And Sparky talks now. Death certainly has been strange. What brings you by? Well, we're trying to find a replacement custodian. You've surely seen the volcano. Oh, yes. Poor Aggie. Must be very tired. Aggie? Aggie is the current custodian. Oh, well, then, yes. We were hoping you might replace Aggie. Oh, Morris. That's... that's some ask. Oh, you can do it, Val. I'm flattered. But those are enormous shoes to fill. And I'm not like you, Morris. I don't love this town like you do. And, if I'm being honest, I can't abide all those arty types and mainlanders tromping around. I can't speak for them. This job isn't for me. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Val. But, uh, well, I understand. Thank you. It's been so nice to see you again. You too, Val. Um, Sparky, I'd love to spend some more time chatting with Val. Oh, I'm sorry, Morris. We really need to keep this search up. That volcano is looking dire. Come back later, Morris. I'll be here. Oh, well, all right, Val. I'll find you later. Goodbye. Slow down, Sparky. I need to get some things straight. No time, Morris. We need to find the next prospect. Well, it's just that I don't quite understand what we're doing. We're looking for the custodian. Well, I get that bit, Sparky, but what does the custodian have to do exactly? Oh, well, um, it's hard to explain with your human words, but uh, the custodian kind of mingles with the island, becomes a part of it. A part of the rock, uh, the volcano? Yes, the rock, and the sea, and the animals, and plants. The custodian becomes a part of all of these things. It becomes part of the island spirit. And you give up being a ghost? Yeah, well, a walking around talking kind of ghost. Stop being someone who can go into the west. It's quite a sacrifice. Oh, wow. Well, no wonder Val doesn't want to fill those shoes. Aggie must be a legend. Ah, oh, she really is. I always thought there are those folks destined to be mayors and, I suppose, custodians. And then there are people like me and Val. They're destined for smaller lives. What? Small? Morris... Your heart is as big as the island. Everyone knows that. Yeah, I suppose I'm more like one of those island oddities in the museum. Yeah, and they were always the visitors' favourites. Now, we need to move on. Next up is Ogden Beckett, in the old town. Ogden it is. I'm right behind you, Sparky. <laughs> 